Hello and welcome back to Intentful Spaces. I am doing a whole spring cleaning series here on my channel and today I'm going to be focusing specifically on the kitchen area. As you all know, the kitchen is a lot to keep up with just on a daily basis with just dishes and keeping the counters wiped off and the clutter in check and all the food stuff that goes on in here. So it is really easy to push all the extra things to the back burner like wiping off the cabinets and cleaning out the oven and the microwave, the top of the refrigerator and stuff like that. So today I'm digging in and getting into all of that. There is salt poured all over in the bottom of my oven because anytime anything spills over, I just pour a little bit of salt on that and then it stops it from burning and making a bunch of smoke. So I need to get to all that and clearly I need to wipe out the microwave and the one area I was really eager to get to was this wall on the island where the kids put their feet when they're eating at the counter. It's absolutely disgusting. I was really good at keeping up with just giving it a quick wipe occasionally and then it just sort of got out of control and I knew it was going to be quite a bit of work and I was saving it to do in this video. I know the camera can be very forgiving when you're seeing my cleaning videos so I want to give you some up close shots so you can see how disgusting things can actually get underneath the counter there Jackson is constantly wiping his hands whenever he's got like jelly or peanut butter or syrup or anything on there so I do need to be putting a coat of touch-up paint on the cabinets and I figured I'd go ahead and paint underneath there as well just to get that wood covered and make it easier to clean all that will be in another video down the line, but today I'm just going to be focusing on my spring cleaning in here. Before I can get to all that, I obviously need to unload the dishwasher and get it loaded back up. If this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, I am so glad that you did. My name is Melissa. I post a whole lot of cleaning motivation as well as decluttering and organizing and a bit of decor. So if you are into that sort of content, I would love for you to hit subscribe so I can keep that motivation coming for you. I so much, very much appreciate all of you who show up to my videos all the time. It means the world to me that something like this that I am creating, you all get so much value from. So that means a lot to me and I just want to say thank you. On that note, all of the support you show really encourages and motivates me to make these videos and keep them coming. I actually have edited this video twice because I was completely done with it the first time. Voiceover, music, everything. All I had to do was hit export and I could upload the video. I was done and then my computer crashed. My laptop totally went out and I lost everything on it. The tech guy came and tried to see if there was anything he could do. He said, everything is gone and my computer is now a paperweight. So I have had to kind of relocate everything back onto my desktop and try to get resituated over here. And now I can no longer take my microphone over into that room where it's quiet to do these voiceovers. And I've had to re-edit this entire video. So it has been quite delayed in getting up after all three of my kids having a birthday in that one month span. I was already so behind and posting and I really do want to post two videos a week. I'm really trying to button down like a posting schedule that works for me that I can consistently keep two videos coming for you in a predictable way. So hopefully I can pull that off now in April and I want to be able to have you guys be able to know when I'm posting. But for now, if you hit that bell notifications and select all, then YouTube will let you know whenever I am posting a new video and you can come follow me over on Instagram where I update people there in the store stories whenever I am posting a new video so that you can see right away when that happens. I always keep my Instagram link right there at the top of the description box below, so I'm really easy to find. And here I'm showing you that I'm refilling my hand soap and my dish soap using the Grove Collaborative brand refills. I actually got all of this from Target. They carry the Grove brand now. So I got the dish soap pump, the hand soap, the foaming hand soap pump, and then the refills. And with the hand soap, it's actually um, a concentrate. So you just put like a little bit in there and then fill the rest of the way with water. I think I get about four hands 
hand soaps out of the one bottle and the tray that I put it all on is a Grove tray but I ordered that from the website um, I always keep my Grove collaborative link in the description box below too they're always giving like freebies and like have running special deals and stuff so they are really great for finding a lot of like the non-toxic fragrance free products and they have a lot of options there which I love and I love 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 ordering products from there it's so fun when I have all the cleaning supplies come in so here I'm just shaking a little baking soda and some of the dish soap into the kitchen sink to scrub it out often you will see me refill my hand soap using some of the Dr. Bronner's I just put a very little bit in the bottom of the foaming hand soap pump and then fill the rest with water but the only thing I don't like about it is it leaves sort of like a film like a residue all over the stainless steel sink so that's what I'm trying to get scrubbed off right now and that is why I prefer to opt for the Grove brand refill because it does not leave that film all over my sink I was using my e-cloth wash it up pad to scrub the sink and now I'm actually using my juicer brush um, there's a lot of really straight edges on this sink and it was just really hard to get in there any other way so I decided to use this and it actually worked really great and I wanted to get like the seam around where the sink is set into the counter um, I opted for an overmounted sink because to me having the undermounted kind of reminded me of like the rim of a toilet bowl I just figured it get really dirty under there I'm sure there's very effective ways of cleaning under there. Just for me, that was something that kind of grossed me out. So I do like having the overmounted so that I can see that it's clean. So then I'm just going to finish up scrubbing with this juicer brush and then put it in the dishwasher to get it sanitized and then just wiping the sink clean and dry with a microfiber towel. I just recently picked up that Grove brand reusable bottle from Target. I kept ordering reusable ones from Amazon and the sprayers just kept going bad on me. So I was like, I trust this company. Everything I've ever gotten from Grove is wonderful. So I'm sure their bottles are gonna work great and the sprayers are gonna keep working for quite a while. So I went ahead and got that, put my thieves cleaner in that and it's working so wonderful. Plus it then matches the bottles that are there. They had like gray, they had different colors too. And then the bottles have like labels on them so you can just turn that silicone sleeve to mark whether it's like a multi-purpose cleaner or a glass cleaner. I have not yet tried the Grove brand cleaners, but I'm definitely open to. Let me know in the comment section if you've tried them and if they're any good.
I was basically cleaning the entire kitchen using just my thieves cleaner and the e-cloths. Um, I know there's definitely some like non-toxic effective ways to clean the oven, like baking soda, vinegar, lemon juice, scrubbing it with aluminum foil. Any tips you have for non-toxic ways of cleaning the oven, let me know in the comment section because I will definitely be trying things out and seeing what works best. Um, but right now I just wanted to get it cleaned out and all that salt cleaned up and everything wiped down. And I will be hitting up the kitchen a later with doing a little bit more in here that I just did not have time for on this day. So now I'm wiping underneath the counter there on that wood and it actually came a lot cleaner than I expected it to, but I know it's going to be a lot easier to maintain once I get some cabinet paint on there. Um, there's a few things I need to do to work on the kitchen. Also, like I said, I need to touch up some of the paint on the cabinets, but I also need to caulk the place where the tile meets the baseboard there. I've got some grout caulking and I mentioned this in a bathroom video I did recently that I need to do it in there too, but I kind of wanted to wait and do it all together rather than breaking up the task, just kind of make it one big project. So I will be sharing that when I get around to it. But I always have like this hierarchy of things that need to be done around the house and it's hard to do things like touch up paint when I still need to like wipe the walls and cabinets. So on this day I wanted to make sure to get all those little things out of the way so that I could actually move on to bigger things like those projects and this was so satisfying seeing how dirty this wall was and how clean it got with such little effort. You saw in one of my recent kitchen decluttering videos that I had to pull all the shelf liner out of that cabinet because there was actually mold underneath it. It was one that just sort of laid on top and somehow moisture got under there and there was mold. So if you have any kind of liner in your cabinets that's not got adhesive to connect it to the cabinet, highly recommend taking a peek under there because that was disgusting. Um, I had some tips about using linoleum tile in there because it'd be heavily durable and then it would actually adhere to the cabinet so that there wouldn't be moisture under there so that's actually a wonderful tip I picked up some linoleum tile they had some at Target it was super cute so I already got that and I will be doing another kitchen decluttering organizing video in the near future where I include that and I also want to work on the pantry it's never been painted and I want to give it a coat of paint and like put some kind of contact paper on the shelves and give it a little refresh so that'll be coming up later once I get through all the spring cleaning I went through my entire bottle of cleaner, so I'm just giving it a refill, just putting a splash of the Thieves Concentrate in there, filling it the rest of the way with water. And I love this cleaner so much. I get so many refills out of this one bottle. It works very effectively, non-toxic, no synthetic fragrances, and it's such a multi-purpose versatile cleaner that I can use on everything. You guys see me use it all the time. And Young Living changed some things where you don't have to like sign up with a membership. Um, you can just order the cleaner if you want to now. And I do always keep 
my link for them right there in the description box below if you want to get yourself a bottle of this highly recommend it and each bottle of cleaner comes out to be just pennies it's so inexpensive how many bottles you can get out of that one bottle of concentrate so that's what I was using on the oven I just let it sit for a while to kind of break through some of that grease and then I'm just scrubbing the rack with my e-cloth scrubbing pad and then washing out these canisters so I can put the utensils back in there It felt like I was doing a floral arrangement, getting all these utensils displayed in these canisters. Um, I do cook a lot and I use every single one of these utensils. I enjoy having a variety of them. Let me know in the comment section, are you somebody who just has a few key pieces that you use or are you someone like me who likes to have a lot of options? We have been making some changes to our whole coffee situation over here. My husband has actually switched to using the French press for his coffee every morning. So I'm just refilling this canister with the Starbucks coffee. And then he puts that in the French press and uses this kettle to add the hot water. I got the kettle for Christmas and then we're actually going to be letting go of this Keurig. As you see, I just use this reusable pod anyways. So we don't even like use the convenience of the pods. I just fill it with the coffee that I want and then put that in there and we actually bought the Keurig used and we've used it for many years and now it's like on its last leg and I'm so tired of troubleshooting the thing and trying to keep it clean. So I'm switching to this pour over method. So I found this canister on Amazon and I will keep all this stuff linked in the description box below so it's really easy for you to find. I love the look of this, the silicone sleeves on there and that geometric pattern that's in there. Um, and this just really simplifies things. I just put that like screen mesh thing on top, put my coffee grounds right in there and then with that kettle pour the hot water over it and it's simple and it with the, how fast the kettle heats up water, this all ends up taking just about as long as a Keurig would anyways. So I am making myself one last cup with the Keurig before I take that out and getting all these parts washed up of the new pour over one that I got and then I'll be getting that all set up.
So because I do enjoy cooking, pots and pans are very important to me. So this is the new ones that I got from Christmas and my birthday, and they're really good size. So I'll link those also. And I'm actually going to be letting this kettle go. It is chipping. It's got so many stains on the outside from being on the stove, but it is rusting on the inside. And that's where I draw the line. So it's got to go. Spraying the cooktop with some of my Thieves Cleaner and using the E-Cloth scrubbing pad to clean it. And this has been doing a really good job at keeping it clean. However, I've noticed there's some scratching happening on the cooktop surface. So the traditional cleaners used for this actually have like a protective coating they put on there to kind of polish it up and keep it from scratching. So I will be picking some of that up from Target to give it a go again because apparently that has worn off and now I'm starting to get a little bit of scratching on there. And I had already mentioned, I'm just trying to do a real quick, easy clean in here, just getting some of the burnt off stuff scrubbed off. It did not get all of that like staining on the glass off, but it did get everything off of the bottom of the oven. There's just a couple spots that even when I use oven cleaners, I couldn't get it off. So there is like a few little stains. And I know I've seen a lot of techniques used for the glass to get that looking like new again. So I'm definitely excited to do something like that later when I have more time. Now I'll be using my E-Cloth stainless steel cleaning set. I'm giving you a close-up so that you can see. This is a microfiber towel with stripes of some scrubby texture that cleans the stainless steel without scratching it. So I'm using that one damp and then just going back over it with the polishing cloth to leave it streak-free. Jillian keeps coming over and showing me something and trying to trick me. And she tries to trick me about a dozen times, so she's getting a real kick out of that. I was considering skipping cleaning out this drawer because it didn't appear to be very dirty, but once I pulled all the lids out, I could see just how dirty it was. And then once I actually went down there to spray the cleaner, I saw exactly how dirty it was. There was so many crumbs in there. I was being so mindful about not letting stuff fall in there after the last time I did this. I'm so surprised that so much was still in there. There was like full on dried up noodles. So I went ahead and wiped out all of the crumbs and then I put my spray in there and wiped it out. So while I was at it, I went ahead and went through the lids that I had in there. I still had two lids to pots I no longer even have. And then another one that was a duplicate, which I only use on the one pot and not on the matching size pan. So I was able to get rid of three of the lids. So just even a few things like this, it adds up in decluttering the kitchen and just having like only what you use and need and actually like instead of just having all this stuff in there because it's just always been there. So just taking a look at stuff like that and seeing if there isn't just a couple of things you could let go of really makes a difference in having a decluttered kitchen. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all the little clutter off the top of the fridge. I'm very tall, so this is a very convenient space for me to stick things when I want it out of reach of the kids. So I got all that off, and now I'm going to go up there and actually spray and wipe everything down. I had intentions to clean all the dust out of that top area, like where the vent is. Um, I already did the vent when I was doing the living room spring cleaning and did all the vents downstairs, but I did notice there was like dust all over the walls where the vent was blowing. So I wanted to get up there and do that. Figured I'd wipe everything off up there, but there was was so much dust on top of the cabinets and in those baskets and I just was not gonna have time to take on that big of a thing today so I'm gonna go ahead and add that on to another day as I was doing all this cleaning, I realized so many more things I wanted to get around to cleaning. And then I remembered I left my cleaner up there, so I had to grab that. So some of the things I wanted to also do is like pull out the stove and clean the tile under there and like clean behind the refrigerator. So some of that stuff I just was not going to be able to get around to on this day. And I'm just kind of making a note of all the things that I still want to do, but it's just going to have to be in another video. You saw here that I did microwave a small dish of water before wiping it down and that works to kind of steam everything off the side so everything wipes off real easy.
getting our little coffee corner all set up and I did end up going to home goods since then and getting something to kind of pull this all together and make it look good really happy with how it turned out I'll be sharing that in the next video coming up so now I've got most of the cleaning done I'm just sort of wrapping things up now I need to bring this stuff out to the garage that needs to go get the last of the dishes put in the dishwasher put the towels away and I'm gonna be wrapping this up because I will be heading over to my sister's as soon as I'm done here and helping her with her kitchen so this was a very very busy day I was very exhausted when I got back so it's been difficult for me to do these voiceovers in the evening after my kids go to bed because I've just been so tired with all the extra work I've been doing helping her at her house and doing my spring cleaning as well as a bunch of other stuff going on that I'm not going to really get into right now but I will later kind of update you guys on some things um and the laptop crashing that totally set me back so now I'm like three videos behind on editing videos that I've filmed so I'm going to try to get those all knocked out this week for you so do be on the lookout for videos coming up this week and I'll be wrapping up my spring cleaning series here shortly and then I'm going to be taking on some projects that I've been waiting to get started on until all the spring cleaning was done. I ran the vacuum to get the floors clean, did not mop on this day because I was having intentions to really do some deep floor scrubbing in an upcoming video. I have not gotten to that yet though. So I did since then just do a quick mopping. So just giving you a pan over of this kitchen area being done. Didn't even touch that dining room table. The kids were kind of playing there while I was busy working on this. So I'm really happy with the drastic difference that this kitchen feels like it has now being so clean in all the areas I keep skipping. If you made it all the way here to the end leave me some kind of citrus emoji in the comment section down below like a lemon or an orange or something to let me know that you did and make sure you're subscribed if you are not already I can see in my analytics that a good portion of the people that watch my video are not even subscribed so please take a second check that and hit subscribe if you do enjoy my content helps out my channel so much and as always thank you all so much for being here